Welcome to video number 18 in the Using iTrain tutorial series. My name is Bob. In tutorial number 17 we saw Ian use a shuttle train route to help set up the reaction delay in step 5. So although we haven't created train routes yet we will go through the steps of creating this little route. We won't go into details or in-depth explanations. We'll just go through the steps of creating a similar route to Ian's. This is Ian's train route. It just takes the loco from one block to another block and back and forth like a shuttle. OK, so that was Ian's layout that you'll see later in his video. This is the layout that we're going to use to create our little train route. You should recognise part of it from the earlier tutorials. Down here we have the sidings that we've seen before, except now I have extended the west siding and the east siding round into an oval and then added this runaround loop here. The east section is divided into three blocks, each with a single feedback. These are the three blocks that we will use for our little train route, E1, E2 and E3. We will create a train route that will shuttle the train from E1 to E3 and back again and keep repeating that until we press the stop button. Now you don't need three blocks for this, you could just have two blocks as Ian has done. You just need sufficient room to accelerate the train up to maximum speed and then decelerate until it gets to the stop position. To create the train route we go up to the usual edit menu, then down to train routes and then we click the new button. And of course the first thing we do is give it a name. We'll call this Reaction Delay Shuffle. We'll leave the type as default and we'll make sure that the item tab is pressed and then we click Append to enter the first step in the route. Then we go down to the bottom window here, click on the Blocks tab, then in the Choices here we select the Block button, and then from the drop-down menu we select our starting block, which is E1. Direction we leave at both. The chance of waiting we leave at 0%. Then we can come back up to the top window and enter our second step by pressing the Append button. Now iTrain will normally try to take the shortest route to the next step. So it may not be necessary to enter the interim blocks to that destination. The interim would be E2 in this instance. But when you are in a situation where you have a fairly short circuit like this, iTrain may decide to take a circuitous route to E3. And it may decide to go around this way to go into E3. So the way we avoid that and ensure that it takes this route, we will put a step in for E2 and we'll tick it as a strict option here. In that way iTrain will ensure that it goes to E2 in the next step of the route. So down in the lower window here in the block tab we click on the block choice, we enter E2, we click it as strict, we leave this as both we don't want it to wait, so we can leave that at 0% and then we can go up here and click the next step. 
back down to the lower window again, click the block choice. In the drop down menu, this time we select E3. And we give it a wait time of 100% this time to ensure that it does wait. Press return and then we'll enter a wait time of one second which we will put in both the minimum and maximum and that ensures that the wait time is exactly one second every time. Press return. So we've gone from E1 to E2 to E3, waited. Now we want to come back to E2, so that will be our next step. We click the Append button. We're in the Blocks tab, the Choice block. We click on this, select E2. We'll click the Strict option to ensure that it does come back to E2 and not go around the loop to E2. We don't need a wait time for E2, so now we can go up, click Append for the next step, back down to the Blocks tab, click Block, and in the drop-down menu we select E1. And this time in E1 we will give it a wait, so we make that 100% and the wait will be one second. So that is all the steps in our train route that we want. Now we need to make it repeat. So we go up to the Options tab, and in this little box here we've got a Repeat tab, and this determines how many times that train route will repeat. And to make it repeat continuously, we make that value zero. And in the change direction here, we'll click on the allowed so that it can move in both directions. We'll go back to the items tab and have a look at what we've set up. So we start in E1. We immediately move on to E2 because there's no wait time here. It goes into E2, immediately moves to E3, where it will stop and wait for one second. Then it moves back onto E2, through E2, to E1, where it will wait for one second. And then the loop repeats itself again. So it goes back to E1 and repeats. When you have a repeating loop like this, it's important that the last step in the route is also earlier in the route, preferably at the start, as we have done here. So that's why E1 is listed twice. And it's essential to ensure that there is a 100% weight whenever you're changing direction liking this step here, and essential that the last step in the route also has a 100% weight. So that's our train route created. We then go down to the Apply button, click on that so that it is now saved as a route, as a train route, and then we click the box here to close down the window. So we will start the route and the train will run up to E3 and then stop somewhere around here. And this is the location where we will mark our layout and check where the train actually stops to see whether it stops right on our stop point or if it stops early or late. And that is how we will then adjust the reaction delay to get it to stop right on the mark. And that stop position was created earlier when we made the blocks themselves. So if we look at E3 here, we've got our stop position that we created. 
uh, which is minus 5 centimetres, so 5 centimetres from the end of the block. And when the train is returning in the backwards direction, we can use this stopping point in E1 as the reference point for checking the positional accuracy when the train is moving backwards. So we can use two points for measuring the forwards and the backwards accuracy, which will save some time. In Ian's video, he was just using the one reference point purely because he was only using one camera to film it. Right, we've created our train route. Now we need to make sure that that route is assigned to the train that we're going to be testing. And we're actually going to be doing it on a loco, of course, but that loco we will have previously assigned as a train. So if um, the train we want to test is 73107, we right click on it down here, click to properties. We're now in the train properties. We go to the routes tab here, and then we make sure that we select the reaction delay shuttle route by selecting it here and making sure that these two boxes are ticked. And press OK. And now that route will be assigned to 73107. If we go down to the control window here into the throttle, click on the route drop down, and then we can select the route here. And in the overview window here, we can now see that the route has been selected here. So when we press the start button, that route will then start. So let's test our train route in offline mode. We'll put the train onto E1, make sure we're in forward gear and we're pointing in the direction that we want to move, which we are. We can then press the play button. You see the track or the route has been reserved. Wait for the speed to increase. Double click on our feedbacks to move the train around. And we let it go into E3 where it's decelerating till it gets to the stop point around here. One second wait, and it comes back the other way. Wait for the speed to increase again before we double click on our feedbacks. And then we can progress it on. It's coming through E2 into E1, decelerates to the stop point, which will be around here. One second wait, and then it repeats again. So that looks to be working perfectly. So we can now stop the route. Right, now we know how to create a shuttle train route similar to the one that you will see Ian using in his video. In the next tutorial, we'll look at the different methods for speed measurement. Hope to see you there. Take care.